All right, I'm back with something I essentially never do, um, a movie review. It is, uh, of course, related to video games as we're talking about Borderlands. I may start doing more movie and TV reviews here because uh, having a Destiny-focused channel is not um, panning out right now, and uh, there's only so much I can say about Diablo and the First Ascendant and stuff. Uh, the Borderlands movie. I am not going to be going into my whole thing with Randy Pitchford. <sighs> You can like look at my Twitter to see what happened there. Essentially, he made a whole paragraph like explaining why he blocked me and that like I'm a dick and like it was very strange. This ended with him saying like maybe that was wrong. I should build a bridge. Should I read his book? And he posted a photo of Hero Killer 2, my book, and I was like, sure, man whatever i'm just a critic and uh if you read my books start with the first one i'm done with that like everyone was very nice defending me and i don't know we don't need to like personally insult randy like a million times but i'm done with that i will just uh talk about the movie itself i did write a review um and then just objectively as an entity it is doing very poorly like we have seen, you know, bad video game movies. We have seen box office bombs. This is really bad. It's it's shaping up to be one of the worst reviewed major movies and one of the least earning major movies of the year. Supposedly, this had a budget of, of something like 140, 170 million dollars. It, it was a lot, like with marketing too, and it made nine point something uh, million dollars. It made nine point three. Uh, million dollars worldwide worldwide it's opening weekend uh, 8.6 million domestically and as of yesterday so it debuted in fourth place uh, for the weekend um, and then it is now sixth place as of monday um, with a, a 30 percent audience drop so that is very bad it came in ultimately at a nine percent on rotten tomatoes i think that that now it's definitely in the top in the bottom 10 bottom 15 video game movies of all time most of these are from like 2005 to 2015 during the video game curse era um the thing about this is like it was pretty easy to see coming from the start as soon as we started seeing uh trailers for this it, it, everyone was like what what is going on here like what is this movie like can this possibly be good um I will say at baseline, I think it is a very challenging idea to adapt any of the Borderlands <clears throat> games to film. Uh, to me, they don't really feel like they would translate all that well to film and they sort of need that wacky, cartoony game environment to work. I, I think they could have done something cool with one of those like Netflix animated video game series, provided there were different writers doing that. That seems like a format that might have worked here. Uh, essentially an hour and a half long blockbuster movie was clearly not the format to do this. Um, the problem is, is like the movie doesn't have an audience. And obviously that's that's demonstrated by its box office performance. But the idea appeared to be that they wanted to make kind of a more generic-ish sci-fi blockbuster that would attract, um, you know, non-game playing audiences, which is understandable and and you know, a good amount of uh, adaptations attempt to do this. Like The Last of Us is adapting the games, but it's also very much pitching itself as like a prestige TV series. Fallout did its own story within the games, but it very much, you know, kept the vibe of the original and it was pretty accessible to people who just like sci-fi in general with a pretty easy concept to explain. Um, Borderlands is not that, but it also upset a lot of actual fans of Borderlands um, because the, the changes it made... Uh, they completely wrote a, a new story to the point where like they had to say that this is not canon to the games where like if you watch it obviously it's not canon to the games they made tiny tina like this supposed chosen one figure where she was like grown in a lab out of like iridian blood and like she, she's supposed to be the key to opening the gate and like the guy the head of atlas is like her surrogate father and like just wildly different storyline than anything we've seen in the games. Um, and so that was, was not pleasing for a lot of people, but it was also how the characters themselves were adapted. Um, 
many just did not <laughs> act like the characters uh, in, in the games, and they had totally different relationships with each other, much of which did not make a whole lot of sense. And then, of course, there were casting issues. Um, the majority of the cast I was actually okay with. Uh, I said in my review that, like, I think Marcus was the best cast, and one of the, I think the best sequence in the movie is um, Lilith arrives in the planet and gets, like, the, the traditional Marcus... Uh, bus ride into town where he's talking about like oh vault hunter and like she keeps having to say that she's not a vault hunter and then he just keeps calling her a vault hunter it's pretty funny but it also like represents how different this is where lilith is not a vault hunter <laughs> at least to start with she's a bounty hunter um and i didn't mind like jack black's claptrap i thought that was actually uh, a good interpretation of Claptrap and like if anyone was kind of funny in the movie it was Claptrap I'd argue he was probably more funny than the games um, Krieg certainly looked and sounded like Krieg but they this movie was so short they didn't have even a second of backstory for Krieg it was just here's Krieg he likes Tina and he's big and, and kills things uh, and that's pretty much it and then um, Tina is Ariana Greenblatt who is a really, you know, big up and coming young actress. She was young Gamora in Endgame. She was young ah Ahsoka in uh, Ahsoka. And, you know, these are, are not the biggest of roles, but like she seems like someone who probably has a, a pretty big career ahead of her. And I don't, I think she, she could have worked as Tina with a different script. They seem to be kind of splitting the difference between her just being like weird and her being like fully insane, like the games and like, it didn't really work making her the complete center of the story with this totally weird rewritten rewritten backstory for her did not work at all. Uh, so we arrive at the problematic casting, which uh, is Kevin Hart as Roland and Kate Blanchett as Lilith. Everyone was like, what the hell is going on as, so as soon as that was announced? And guess what? It did not work in practice. Uh, I read an interview where I think producer Avi Arad, who also produced Madam Web, so this guy's having a hell of a year. Uh, was like skeptical of <laughs> casting Kevin Hart in this role in the first place. Um, but so, like, the idea was like Kevin Hart wanted to do this because he wanted to prove he could be like an action star uh, as opposed to just like a comedy guy. I don't know if he proved that. Like, I feel like anyone can attempt to be an action star with good enough choreography planned for them. But he was just kind of, he was acting like Kevin Hart, but maybe like 20 percent dialed down. In a story like this, Roland is like supposed to be this like big, burly, you know, temperate soldier. He's kind of the straight man to all the craziness of the Borderlands world. And none of that is here. Um, and then just the the physical disparity. Like, <laughs> you know, Kevin Hart's thing is like he's short. Everybody makes jokes about him being short, including him. Literally, Ariana, uh, Tina is almost as tall as him. And it just it's such a weird transformation for his character that does not work at all. And like it's it's crazy because Kevin Hart is like this giant box office draw. And I think one one common thread here is that Borderlands seemed to go out of its way to court these like really high profile actors and actresses um, in order to be like, wow, look at these big A-listers we got for our movie. And uh, assuming they would be box office draws, even if they did not remotely fit in the roles. That is also true of Kate Blanchett's Lilith. Um, she's probably, you know, 30 years older than Lilith in the games. And obviously, Kate Blanchett is a extremely talented actress. She has two Oscars um, and everyone is kind of wondering what she, why is she here? I think interviews with her said she was bored <laughs> during COVID and wanted to just do something wacky. Um, obviously, she can do whatever she wants and like this will not affect her career. Uh, it's very funny because it mirrors the arc of her character in Tar, who is like a really famous composer and then through a series of scandals, ends up directing uh, symphonies for a Monster Hunter <laughs> concert um, at the very end of the movie. And it's it's a very similar arc to what we're seeing here, like playing this terrible role um, in a video game movie. Blanchett is, is fine. Like, she's a good actress, but she's, she's not Lilith, like, at all. And it's not just that, like, she's older than the game. It's that this doesn't even make sense in the context of the story. Um, we have Jamie Lee Curtis as Tannis, who also has an Oscar. She's fine. We have Moxie, who is kind of dull and not remotely as energetic and lively as the games. Uh, but the point is, is like they remember Lilith's mother and they remember Lilith when she was like an eight-year-old child, like escaping the planet. 
and they're like seven to ten years older than Kate Blanchett and like they all look of a similar age and it just it doesn't it doesn't make any sense unless something is really weird with the lifespans on Pandora I don't know about um the action is hindered very significantly by the fact that this is a PG-13 movie it makes essentially no sense that this is a PG-13 movie given the gore soaked uh originals you know, games, that's like a big component of those. Um, this kind of neuters a lot of the action scenes. And I think there's, there's essentially like no blood in this movie at all. There is, there is an, um, a, a, what could have been a cool action scene where they're infiltrating the poison mine, I forget what it's called. It's from the games and they run into the, the bloodshot psycho variants. And like, there's this pretty wild sequence of like them being pursued through the caves and like fighting them off but like it's totally butchered because there's no real gore and you can tell how much they're holding back i call this rebel moon syndrome where the first cut of those movies were just had all this bloodless action that like butchered the editing of the fight scenes and it fell totally flat but at least that movie had an alternate version they filmed with lots of gore i don't think this one did they may have a director's cut or something um so that didn't work it wouldn't have saved the movie by itself but it was it was a poor decision that again i think was focused on let's broaden the appeal because r-rated movies make less money and so we'll make more money with pg-13 and like that clearly didn't pan out um there's also just sort of the unpredictability sorry the predictability of the story where if you've played the games and you see lilith not as a siren i think you know where this is going that she becomes a siren at the end and that she, not Tiny Tina, is the chosen one to open the vault with, you know, these Firehawk powers that she would get at the end. It was Seeing her Firehawk wings and her Firehawk powers was actually pretty cool. I don't think the CGI is, like, the biggest problem with this movie, honestly. Like, I've seen much worse CGI in, in many movies lately. Um, it, was, it was fine. It just, you know, the action was neutered for other reasons. But then, again, they get in the vault and there's nothing. Like, it's literally a bunch of floating cubes, which somehow really impresses the atlas guy and then he gets sucked in by um tentacles into the floor this would be where you fought a boss in the games and they don't fight anything they just leave um there's 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 a significant lack of any nods to like this game being about loot like you can recognize a couple of the guns from the games no one opens any cool treasure chest there's no grand you know stuff in the vault that's super cool it's just like they open the vault and then defeat atlas and then leave that's sort of it uh it's 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 not compelling like it's it's a very poor adaptation it's taken eight years to make you know it it was guided like you can say some of these adaptations the halo thing now they're making yakuza show where like they're specifically saying no one has played the games i don't believe that this movie was made by by people who didn't play the games at all Again, not to circle back to Randy, but like he, you know, he's the Borderlands guy and he was on set consulting for this like all the time. Uh, and so if people who made the games are very much involved in this. It's just they were trying to split the difference between general audiences and game players. I, I feel like they took game players for granted, assuming that they would show up and like the film just because it like had the characters and like sort of looked like Borderlands. But they changed too much stuff. They changed way too much stuff. And then the the casting of the two main characters, you know, two of the biggest characters in the movie was bafflingly terrible. And it just seems like they tried to get as many A-listers as possible to be like, look, we got A-listers for our Borderlands movie, which, again, has confused everyone from the start. Um, we know this was the idea here. They said this very publicly was they were trying to begin a Borderlands cinematic universe, um, more movies, maybe a show. I don't know. You can also tell very much so that that was the plan, because if you were going to make, you know, a one off Borderlands movie, who would you cast as the villain? I wonder. Uh, Handsome Jack. He's not. I, I didn't even see a teaser for him in the movie, but very clearly they were saving him for some sort of follow up. Uh, they obviously cut characters um, that were other vault hunters, even from the first game that did not show up. And they were, you know, no doubt they were going to introduce them to some extent in certain in, in future movies. And, you know, there's three very long games. So there's and the pre-sequel and Tales from the Wilderness. There's a lot of source material to work with, which is why it's it's kind of, you know, it, it's stunning. They didn't at least try to adapt one of these stories. Like some of them could have worked a little better. The pre-sequel uh, could have been OK. And, you know, bits and pieces of, of probably two would have been a good thing to adapt. 
but this is an adaptation of nothing. It's just they invented their own story. They changed a ton of stuff about the world and the characters and game players didn't like it. General audiences didn't show up. And here we are. So it's it's pretty unusual to like have a, a video game movie fail this much. It just, you know, we, we've seen much, much better adaptations as of late where something like the Halo show is an anomaly uh, because it, it sticks out like a sore thumb, some yeah, sore thumb that it's not, you know, nearly as good as the other stuff. Even the goddamn Twisted Metal show is really good. <laughs> like we're they're really kind of, you know, knocking it out of the park with some of these. Obviously, we have things like Arcane and Cyberpunk Edge Runners, which are like some of the highly is the, the most highly rated shows on Netflix ever. Uh, so, you know, people people have this down. I just think they sort of just made wrong decisions here at every turn. And, you know, this this could have I, I have trouble believing any version of this really would have succeeded at the box office. But, you know, some kind of show, some kind of animated series, I think that would have been OK. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's it's done like, it, you know, you, you open with nine million dollars worldwide this movie is going to lose at least a hundred million dollars, I'd say. And obviously there will be no more of these. Um, Gearbox will turn its intention in, attention entirely to Borderlands 4, which keeps being teased, but is never announced. I could go into a whole separate thing about Borderlands 4, um, my concerns about it, both in terms of like how it's going to age, how gameplay will age, how the humor will age, and then just decision-making. Like, I don't know if people involved in Gearbox thought the movie was good, you know, who's to say they don't make wrong decisions for this next Borderlands game, which is so far after three. That's a topic for another day. But yeah, so that's my uh, expanded review of Borderlands. Not trying to, quote, be a dick, but uh, (laughs) this is, you know, my my impressions of this as a big fan of Borderlands. I, you know, as I said in my big Twitter feud, I have played hundreds of hours of these games. I'm a huge fan of this is probably the series I played like the third or fourth most behind, you know, Destiny and Diablo and I don't know, maybe the old Halo games or something. Uh, so I, I really, you know, treasure it in a lot of ways. But like like most fans who who saw this movie, it, it didn't work for them and it didn't work for me. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.